Hey everybody, it's Holly here and welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving into a topic which I get asked about all the time and that is should you train fasted or do you need to eat before lifting to maximize your results? A brand new study published in the International Journal of Sports Nutrition and Exercise Metabolism takes a closer look at this exact research question. The results are subtle, but they are important, especially if you train in the mornings or are setting up your training schedule around your eating windows. So let's unpack what the group of researchers found and what it really means for your muscle growth, strength outcomes, and performance. Faster training has long been a hot topic on social media. Some folks argue that training without food can lead to greater fat loss, while others claim that it compromises training quality and limits muscle growth over time. In fact, I saw a post just this week on social media from Dr. Stacey Sims telling women of all the negative consequences of training in a fasted state. Specifically, the post you see on screen alleged that fasted training will raise cortisol, blunt performance and impact your recovery, especially if you're doing high intensity or strength training. Now, for me personally, I think there is absolutely nothing wrong with eating before you train, and I do it myself on occasion. But from my observations of staying up to date with the latest research, it's been my understanding that you may still be able to adapt quite robustly to resistance training, even when training in a fasted state. Now, much of the previous research regarding fasting and training has focused on aerobic exercise, or it's been short term and very context specific, like during Ramadan. Now, what makes this new study extremely valuable is that it directly examines the effects of resistance training in the fasted versus fed state over a full 12 week time period with a careful control of diet, protein intake and training workload. This kind of design lets us draw much stronger conclusions regarding everyday eating patterns and their impact on adaptations to resistance training. So what is the purpose of the present study? Well, the goal of this study was to test whether performing resistance training after an overnight fast compared to training after eating affects changes in muscle size, strength, power, and body composition over time. The researchers also tracked total training volume and controlled for dietary intake to isolate the effect of pre-exercise nutrition. Their hypothesis was that training in a fasted state might lead to slightly worse outcomes than training in a fed state, particularly for hypertrophy and performance adaptation. So let's take a look at the methods. This study enrolled 28 adults, mostly women, 22 females in fact, and six men, who are not currently resistance training. They were randomly assigned to either a fasted training group or a fed group. Both groups followed the same resistance training program, which included two supervised sessions per week for 12 weeks, focusing on both upper and lower body. The program progressed in volume and was designed to challenge the participants with two to three sets per exercise using an eight to 15 rep range. The fasted group performed their training sessions after 10 to 12 hours of overnight fasting, while the fed group consumed a carbohydrate rich meal one to two hours before training around one gram of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight. Importantly, all participants received nutritional guidance to help keep their total energy and protein intake consistent throughout the week. And for those that are wondering, the protein recommendation was set to 1.4 grams per kilogram per day. Quadricep muscle thickness was assessed in this study using B-mode ultrasound at multiple sites. These individual measurements were then summed to calculate the total quadricep femoris thickness. In addition to muscle thickness, fat-free mass and body fat were measured using DEXA, and maximal strength and power were measured for both the bench press and the knee extension. And finally, the participants' total training volume was tracked and matched between the groups. So let's take a look at the results. What did they find? Well, both the fasted and fed group significantly increased quadricep muscle thickness over the 12 weeks, with no meaningful differences between them. The fasted group gained an average of 1.21 centimeters, while the fed group gained 1.18 centimeters, which is nearly identical. The fasted group also showed a statistically significant increase in fat-free mass, but the difference was small and likely not meaningful in practical terms. 
looking to strength, well, that increased in both groups too, with the bench press improving by 10.5 kilograms in the fasted group and 4.9 kilograms in the fed group, while the strength in the knee extension improved equally across both groups by around 28 to 29 kilograms. When it came to muscular power, both groups saw improvements in lower body power, but no major changes were observed in terms of upper body power. The author speculated that the lack of change may have been attributed to the fact that the participants were performing a traditional training approach without being encouraged to perform the concentric phase at maximal intentional velocity. Regarding the overall stimulus, the total training volume was nearly identical between both groups, and both groups consumed similar protein and calories. The only noted difference was that some individuals in the fasted group reported mild symptoms of dizziness and nausea, but overall their adherence to the protocol remained perfect. So what does this mean for you and I? Well, the most practical takeaway here is that if you're training in a fasted state, especially early in the morning, it won't likely hurt your results as long as your overall diet, protein intake and training effort are in check. This offers much needed flexibility for those who prefer not to eat before exercise, whether due to scheduling, lack of appetite, or simply personal preference. And that's myself included here. That said, it's also clear that fasted training isn't better either. Now for those doing higher frequency or higher volume training programs, eating beforehand may still enhance performance and recovery, even if long-term muscle gains do end up similar. But this study was not designed to test that hypothesis. One thing to consider is that this study used a relatively low frequency training model with just two sessions per week. So it's possible that in more advanced or higher frequency programs, differences in training quality could potentially compound over time. And while the fasted group technically saw greater increases in fat-free mass in this study, the effect size was quite small, so it's unlikely to matter much when it comes to real-world training outcomes. So to wrap this video up overall, this study supports a flexible, personalized approach to pre-training nutrition. And unlike what you've heard from people like Dr. Stacey Sims and numerous others on social media, you don't need to eat before lifting to build muscle or strength, as long as you're total training volume and daily nutrition are consistent with the current evidence-based practices. But if eating beforehand helps you feel stronger, train harder, or avoid nausea while lifting weights, then there's no reason for you to avoid it either. Pre-exercise nutrition should be about what works best for you, not just what trends on social media are telling you. Alrighty, everybody, thank you so much for watching and please do let me know in the comments, do you train fasted or do you prefer to eat before you train? And also, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more science-based fitness breakdowns just like this. And if you're looking for an evidence-based training program that works for your schedule and your training goals, please get in touch with me. I'll see you in my next video.